Hey guys, Mitchell here. Um, I've had a lot of requests from people um, asking me about what Bitcoin is, you know, and more importantly, what's the appeal of it, and you know, why would they want to use it? So, um, in, in order to do that, I think it's going to be best for me to compare it to an existing currency that you're already familiar with. So, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar, and then we'll look at Bitcoin. There's actually a lot of interesting talk about Bitcoin right now because politicians are maybe thinking about accepting it uh, because in the states, in how it's in the gray zone, they, uh, they might be able to circumvent um, the caps that they have for their contributions. But um, anyways, a lot of you have heard about Bitcoin. A lot of the media always makes reference to Silk Road or how it's used for money laundering, uh, which truthfully is kind of stupid. So that is true, uh, if you want to talk fact, the number one currency for you know, money laundering, buying weapons and drugs is in fact the US dollar. So a lot of the problems that people are associating with Bitcoin are problems that are associated with all currencies. So let's just break it down. I'm not going to get into how Bitcoin is made or anything, anything like that. This is just really basic so you can kind of have a good idea of you know, what the appeal of it is. So US dollar for one is centralized. Bitcoin is decentralized. I do apologize I'm on my iPhone. It's not the best video. So in the United States, there's a private company that manages the money supply. Um, it's only one company, so that's it's centralized. They control how much is uh, how much is produced, how much can be lent out, and it, it's it's one body. Whereas Bitcoin has no central entity. There's no one government that uh, controls or manipulates it or one private company, in, state, in the case of the US, or most banks are actually private. Um, it's decentralized, so it works very much peer-to-peer. -peer. Again, I can get into big, great detail, but this is just basic. So one company, not one company, it's peer-to-peer -peer on the internet. Second one, US dollar and almost every other currency is inflatable. What that means is new money can be created. So when you talk here about Obama uh, increasing the debt, that's him inflating the money. He's, in other words, he's just making more money. You're adding to the supply. The problem with inflation is that it's a hidden tax. So when there's more money in circulation, uh, the value of the money that you already own goes down. So it can be inflated and that can hurt people. Bitcoin cannot be inflated. So that has potential to hold the value and keep the value over time. Now there are problems associated with having a currency that can't be inflated as well. And that occurs when you have money hoarding. So eventually when Bitcoin is completely mined, um, you could have issues of money hoarding and whoever has the most amount of currency can manipulate the supply. But again, in the sake of simplicity, US dollars, you can always make more. Bitcoin, there's a fixed amount. A uh, small note, uh, in the US dollars, or all other currencies really, uh, with Bitcoin you can only send it uh, one way. So I send money to you. Uh, you can't send me a refund or send it back. If you send it back to me, it's a separate transaction. Whereas in the US dollars, we have things like chargebacks, refunds, etc. I apologize for my writing, it's not the best. Uh, another big one is the transfer fee. So banks make a killing off transfer fees. Not to mention, if you've ever sent money abroad, it, um, it can get costly and pricey um, and politics gets in the way and it, it's kind of an unfortunate thing like there are some countries who can't use PayPal for example just because their country is restricted and I don't think that's fair um, you know everyone should have a, access to the open marketplace so transfer fees are generally high with US dollars whereas Bitcoin it's it's very low very low transfer fees and it's very very easy you're not setting up a you know bank account where you got to do a wire and it's going through all these intermediaries just like an email you 
get an email address and send it. Bitcoin's the exact same way. You get their Bitcoin wallet address, their public key, and you send the money. It's it's as easy as that. And even with mobile phones, it's just these are you know uh, whatever one of those uh, codes, and you're good to go. So a lot less transfer fees, and that saves you a ton of money and ease of use. Oh, QR codes is what I was talking about. Um, okay. A lot of people will also tell you, sorry guys if I'm rambling on, let me switch over here. Bitcoin has what's called a blockchain. So a lot of the media is telling you that Bitcoin sorry, uh, is totally anonymous. Though there are some elements that are true and there are some new software coming out that makes it more anonymous, for the most part, all transactions are logged. And that's in the BitChain. So if you know someone's public uh, Bitcoin address, you can actually search the uh, BitChain and you can see all their transactions. So unlike cash, there is a lot of transaction logging in the banking system. So don't get that wrong. Um, but with cash, there is no log. So you really have no idea where it's going. So I mean, I'm not saying which one's better or worse, but that's just the way it works. Um, and that's a, that's pretty much the basics here. So, and I have one big important point to get on at the very end. So hold on to that because it's one that I think is probably the most important thing of all this. Um, and no one ever mentions it. So just hold on for a sec while I get to that. So again, decentralized often, I think well, uh, every country it's uh, centralized. It's a private company that manages the money supply and yeah, Bitcoin decentralized, inflatable, you can add more. Bitcoin has a fixed amount. Uh, what happens when you have a fixed amount um, and there's more demand for it, we'll just go down to lower digits, smaller digits. That may get confusing, so there may need to be a split of sorts in order to make it sensible for people. Um, multiple transactions, uh, forward, backwards, etc. Bitcoin send it one way. Uh, USDs and other currencies, lots of transfer fees, it's a lot of intermediaries, it's a pain. Uh, Bitcoin, very low transfer fees. Uh, though we could see that change, you know, with more brokers and things like that. Uh, US dollar, uh, if it's logged, uh, no cash is logged, but generally most transactions are. Uh, Bitcoin, all transactions are logged in the bit chain. But an um, important thing I want you to know. The U.S. dollar is a debt-based currency, and BTC is not debt-based. What that means is, because a private company manages the money for the U.S. government, whenever the U.S. government wants new money, they have to borrow it. So. All money is borrowed. That's why you have a national debt in the first place. Um, and when you get, start getting into these conversations about, ooh, you have to pay down the national debt, it's a, it's a never-ending conversation. It's, it, will, it will never happen because then you erase all money. So that's a problem because you constantly have interest to pay. And there's always uh, more interest to be paid than money actually exists. So it's a perpetual cycle of having to borrow more, borrow more. Um, Bitcoin, not debt based. There's not going to be interest payments. It, it's just money there. It wasn't borrowed from someone in order to put it in circulation. So, major, major, major difference. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited about Bitcoin. So, in order to backtrack to the original point, uh, if you want to understand the appeal, um, here you go. I mean, your Bitcoin is free from a lot of government intervention. It's easy to send money. It, you know, it's the way money should be going. It's a global world. It's, you know, we don't need these lines in the sand anymore. And it makes things easier for, you know, a lot of us. And uh, yeah, there you go. I hope that was useful for you. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else you need to know. Um, in order to buy it, oh yeah, check the link below. If you want to buy Bitcoin, there are two spots you can buy it in Canada uh, that I recommend. The first one is Vault of Satoshi. It's brand new. It's 
got a super simple interface, uh, lots of new features added daily. And the second one, and the biggest one in Canada, is Vertex. It's also very good. That's the biggest one in Canada, so you are going to get better rates. Uh, you're going to have smaller spreads. And uh, again, it's a pretty good system. So if you have any questions, put them below. And be sure to check out the links and sign up and start buying and you know trading and doing things in Bitcoin. Cheers.